What's up everyone, how's it going this watch? Hope you guys are all the way well. And today we're going to be doing a comparison video with the new Osmo Action. This is a compact camera from a DJI and it's obviously going to compete directly against the GoPro 7 Black, which we have right beside it. You guys can kind of see the difference side by side. We're shooting 4K at 60 frames per second. We're going to dive into the main differences between the two as well as some more examples of what you can expect in terms of the quality out of the Osmo action. So if you're interested in finding out which camera is best, we're going to get right into the comparison. But before that, let's uh, take a look at our sponsor that made this video possible. Now, if you guys may have noticed on the channel page as well as some of my social media feeds, I've been using wadsyed.tech to represent the channel in a different light. And for years now, I've been trying to figure out a way to represent my content in a relevant fashion and something that's easy to direct people to without giving them a huge URL to remember or to write down. And a dot .tech domain name for this purpose makes a lot of sense. It's super relevant, easy to remember, and relatively affordable compared to everything else out there. And especially if you want an awesome uh, URL address that's super simple and easy to remember, uh, definitely makes a lot of sense. And dot .tech domains have been kind of revolutionizing the industry. Uh, some of the biggest brands are using them, such as Intel, Viacom, CES. And if you're anybody in the tech world, developer, a programmer, or even just a general tech enthusiast like myself, it does make a lot of sense. If you're interested, check out the link in the description or go to go.tech forward slash mwtech to get your .tech domain now. And if you're interested in signing up for a one to five year plan, you actually get 90% off while using our discount code MW Tech. Definitely want to give a huge shout out for a dot tech domains for sponsoring this video and for allowing us to make awesome content like this. So without any further ado, let's get right into the comparison. Now, firstly, in terms of design, the Osmo Action is pretty much identical to the GoPro 7 Black in pretty much every way in terms of overall form factor. It's also using the same ecosystem of attachments designed for GoPro cameras, which is an awesome thing. Now, probably the biggest distinction between the Osmo Action and the GoPro is the fact that we have better overall displays on both the front and back of the Osmo Action. Namely, the front is a full color display that allows you to actually monitor the video so it's excellent for vlogging or taking selfies. The 7 Black on the other hand does have a front panel display but it's monochromatic and it's strictly used to monitor your settings and battery life. Furthermore you can also see that the rear display on the Osmo Action is significantly bigger than the GoPro side. It's also 16 by 9 so you can actually view your entire video without having to deal with bars at the top and bottom. Now even though the Osmo has a larger display which you would think means a better overall navigation and overall ease of use the GoPro system is just so well laid out and so well thought out and since they've had so many years developing their software it's actually just as easy to use and just as practical and just as convenient. Now both cameras have excellent overall build quality and they're water resistant down to about 10 meters deep. Now the similarities also continue when you take a look at internal specifications they both have a similar configured uh, 12 megapixel CMOS chip that's overall about a half point three inch in terms of size. Both can shoot 4k video at 60 frames per second as well as 1080p video up to 240 frames per second and both utilize some sort of video stabilization that's electronic based. We have the Rocksteady system on the DJI side versus the hyper smooth stabilization on the GoPro side. Now in terms of the side by side video comparison between these two at 4K 60 frames per second, one thing you're going to know straight off the bat is that the GoPro definitely has a slightly wider field of view and uh, the Osmo Action when the electronic stabilization is enabled tends to zoom in and crop into the frame which uh, doesn't look as immersive as the GoPro. The other thing you're going to notice on the GoPro's standard picture profile setting is that the color saturation, sharpness, and overall contrast is definitely turned up compared to what we encounter with the Osmo, which looks a little bit dull in terms of what's details presented, but that's mainly due to the fact that the uh, GoPro naturally kind of boosts all those settings uh, in the standard picture profile settings. If you do use the ProTune feature on the GoPro, you can adjust all these parameters in post, but generally out of the box, you are going to notice that the image on the GoPro looks a little bit more vibrant, contrast 
contrasting and saturated, and you're going to notice a little bit better fine detail. Now, in terms of the stabilization technology on both cameras, both are actually really good in terms of resolving smooth looking images. Most of my tests were done on foot, whether going downstairs or running trails, which is very jarring to see without any stabilization. But both the Rocksteady and the Hyper Smooth delivered some really nice, pleasant looking footage that rivals even stuff that you're going to get on 3 axis gimbal systems, but using electronic stabilization. And as you can see from the stair shots, there's not really a huge difference between the two. And uh, especially in extreme examples, you might see a little bit better, smoother results on the DJI side. But in most cases, the Hyper Smooth delivers the same uh, general level of smoothness that your counter. Now, if you're riding a bike or doing anything um, less jarring than running trails or going down steps, you are going to notice that pretty much in most cases, both of these systems are very smooth and identical in terms of their stabilized footage results. Now, on a side note, I did notice that there's a little bit more image artifacts going on with the Osmo Action, especially in extreme cases when you move the camera really fast back and forth. The fine detail is just not as apparent as it is on uh, the uh, GoPro side, even though the GoPro technically is recording on average at a lower bitrate, but it tends to resolve fine detail and fast motions just a little bit better uh, than what we find with the Osmo Action. That could be a shutter speed setting issue uh, that could be resolved in the future but generally again very similar results for the most part now in terms of time warp or hyperlapse photography i did find that the gopro resolved smoother looking footage in those particular types of sequences you're just going to notice less jarring effects uh, compared uh, to the osmo action based on our particular tests now, some of the final things that we're going to talk about is the battery performance. Uh, luckily, both of these cameras have user replaceable batteries. In terms of actual shooting 4K at 60 frames per second, they are going to be pretty power hungry and they get fairly hot, especially in a hot environment. So definitely be careful, but expect anywhere between 80 to 90 minutes of usage at 4K a resolution. When you are shooting 1080p, you can get up to 10 to 15% better battery life performance. And they're both pretty much identical based on all our recharge and discharge cycles in terms of uh, longevity and there's not going to be a huge difference in terms of one lasting longer than the other. Now when it comes to the price perspective of things uh, the uh, GoPro 7 Black has been out for a few months now and uh, you could typically get it on Amazon for about $370 ish. Uh, there's definitely a lot of bundles out there which I would definitely recommend uh, to get. So for uh, just under $400 you can typically get a camera a couple of accessories, an SD card, an extra battery. Uh, right now, it looks like the DJI Osmo Action is probably the better deal. On Amazon, you can get it for around $350 with a uh, bundle. So we're talking an extra battery, a couple of accessories, as well as an SD card. And uh, for that price, I would probably go with the Osmo Action. I do like the overall video quality of uh, the GoPro, but you can adjust the Osmo Action to kind of fit your needs. And from a user User standpoint, uh, I definitely like that front display and the rear display. Uh, just using in general is a more pleasurable experience and it's more of a stylish, more modern esque uh, device. Uh, plus, I can use all my existing GoPro mounts. So, if I needed another GoPro camera, I would probably go with the Osmo Action. Or if you're looking for an awesome action camera, uh, definitely both options are going to be very satisfying to say the least. But other than that, guys, that's really it. Definitely love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Big thank you to you guys for continuing to support the channel. And a big thank you to Dot Tech Domains for sponsoring this video and making that possible as well. See you later. Take care.